After Hurricane Katrina, several New Orleans churches had a problem with rats, especially a Presbyterian, a Methodist, and our own Unity Church, all in the same vicinity on St. Charles Avenue. Each church, in its own fashion, had a meeting to deal with the issue. The Presbyterians decided that it was predestined for the rats to be in their church, and they'd just have to deal with them. The Methodists decided they should deal with the rats lovingly in the style of Charles Wesley, so they humanely trapped them and released them outside the city. Within three days, they were all back in the church. Unity had the best solution. They voted the rats in as members, so now they only see them at Christmas and Easter. That's my way of saying good morning and that I'm very glad to see you all, especially since it isn't even Christmas or Easter. It's important for us to join together, to support each other, to meditate and pray together as one with others who are on the spiritual path. Today, I'd like to emphasize this idea of oneness and unity, our unity with all people, all beings, Mother Earth, and the whole universe, every atom of it. This idea of our interconnectedness with the all is a profound and new idea to many people, but the reality is that it's a very old idea that has been around for at least 8,000 years in such teachings as those found in the Bhagavad Gita that we looked at last week. Unity's teachings were founded on this ancient truth that there is only one power and one presence in the universe. What is new is that science, namely physics, has caught up with metaphysics. Science and spirituality have merged. Over the centuries, there have been many debates about science versus religion, prompting people to think that they had to choose between the two. However, in the last 50 years or so, science and spirituality are validating and reinforcing each other, especially Eastern thought and systems like unity. That's why unity teachings are often called practical spirituality. We use these modern scientific findings so that we can benefit from them in practical ways like healing and manifesting our good. There used to be, back in the 1400s during the Renaissance and the 1700s during the Age of Enlightenment, a seeming schism between science and religion that led mankind to feeling small and insignificant in the grand scheme of things. We were like a grain of sand on an enormous beach that could swallow us up in a second. But now, Quantum physics and spiritual paths like unity, Buddhism, Hinduism, A Course in Miracles, yoga, to name but a few, are all saying that there is only one power and one force in the universe and that we are all part of that force. Somewhat like in a hologram, universes, penetrating universes, all one. Quantum physicist Edwin Schrodinger said, the total number of minds in the universe is one. In fact, consciousness is a singularity phasing within all beings. Unity says, of course, there is only one presence and one power in the universe. A Course of Miracles states, the physical world we appear to be in was not created by God but is an illusion of our own making. It is our false belief in separation. It is literally a dream we are dreaming. End of quote. In other words, there is no other out there separate from God. That is maya or illusion. We are all part of the one, part of God. The mind-only school of Buddhism says that everything is maya or illusion, that all that we consider to be physical reality out there, separate from us, is simply a projection of our minds, like the illusion of an oasis in the desert. The scientific ideas 
of the Renaissance and the Age of Enlightenment were great in their day. They catapulted us out of the superstitions of the Middle Ages and helped us understand things like the fact that the world wasn't flat and that the sun didn't circle around the earth. This enabled such things as Columbus's discovering the new world because he didn't believe he was going to just fall off of a flat world. This new way of seeing things also helped rid us of superstitions, like the idea that God wanted Christians to torture, kill, and steal the land of everyone who was an infidel, which meant anyone who wasn't Roman Catholic. The Crusades, the insurrection, and the torture chambers for heretics like those in France's Mont Saint-Michel stopped. But again, three centuries later, we need to think out of the box and not be slaves of the old Newtonian thought system that resulted in our thinking that we are all separate and that we should compete and try to be unique and better than everybody else. If we don't think out of the box and become teachable, we will be as unenlightened in our day as those who maintained that the earth was flat in the 1400s. Unity has always attracted smart people who can think out of the box. We have never been people who live strictly by worldly values and follow the herd. So when new ideas come along, we aren't close to them. We're teachable, not gullible by any means, but open-minded. We look at new ideas, we study them, and make our own conclusions. One of these new ideas of the last 50 years or so is that of quantum physics. A book entitled The Grand Biocentric Design has recently caught the interest of the Dalai Lama and scores of out-of-the-box thinkers. This book is a bit like Fritz Kopra's The Tao of Physics, which was the rage in the 70s. But what were just theories in the Tao of Physics have become fact now due to research and equipment which made it possible to validate the theories at places like MIT, Harvard, and Stanford. The idea is that we are all one massive substance in the universe, not separate parts. Quantum physics says that reality just isn't what we thought it was. Everything is connected, for example. This isn't really hard to grasp. Every time I forget to lock my car at church and go to the side door window and use my remote to lock my car, I become very aware that there's a whole lot more going on in the empty space between my remote and my car than appears to the naked eye. So what does all this have to do with us in a practical way? First, it emphasizes that we create our reality in a very real and physical sense, as well as in a psychological sense. Unity co-founder Charles Fillmore said this in the late 1800s, of course. Modern psychology finally caught up with him 100 years later, and now modern physics is supporting that idea. The old paradigm led us to believe that we are like tiny ants in the vast expanse of life, victims of a universe of random laws. The quantum physicists say the opposite, that the way we see things and interact with them is powerful. They go further to say, like Heisenberg's theory, that our very observation of physical objects changes those objects. Thus, we actually create what we term reality. The physical world isn't just some thing out there separate from us, acting on us. We're actually creating it all the time. That is probably the scientific explanation behind why so many people can cure themselves of various physical problems, like Charles and Myrtle Fillmore did. Our creating is hinged on our thinking we create our world, not only emotionally and intellectually, but physically too, according to quantum physics. Secondly, when answering the question, what do all these scientific findings about the oneness of all life have to do with me, 
We need to open our minds and think outside of the box that was created in the 1700s. That box says that people and objects are all separate. This thinking is an illusion and is blocking the reality of what many people call miracles. The illusion of thinking that we are all separate from each other creates fear, war, and ego problems between individuals, groups, races, and nations. It creates a false sense of reality that is as dangerous as when the people of the Middle Ages thought the Roman Catholic Church way of thinking was the only one and that they were justified in torturing and killing others out there who weren't Catholic. Today, this old paradigm thinking, like there are other people, other worlds, God out there separate from us, is scientifically and spiritually false. Those concepts make us fear, judge, and hate one another, which in reality causes us to fear, hate, and judge ourselves because our unconscious then feels that whatever is true for others must be true for us because we're humans too. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you takes on a whole new meaning, right? In the book, The Grand Biocentric Design, it says that quantum physics validates that we create our reality, even in physical terms. In psychological terms, it's pretty easy to see how we create our reality. We see things the way we were programmed to. Remember the story of the woman who moved to a new town and asked the old man what the town's people were like? He answered with a question. What were the people like in the last town where you lived? She answered, oh, they were irritating, mean, close-minded, and arrogant. The wise man then answered, I'm sorry to say that's just what the people here are like. A second lady moved to town and asked the old man the same question, and he answered with the same question. What were the people like in her last town? She answered, oh, they were beautiful souls. I hated it that my job transferred me. They were loving and helpful and fun and sharp in every way. The wise man then answered, you will love our town then, ma'am, because the people here are just like that. The old man knew that we take our thinking and our reality with us wherever we go. But the quantum physicists take it one step further and say that we are actually participating in the creation of physical reality. Stephen Hawking, for example, said, and I quote, there is no way to remove the observer, us, from our perceptions of the world. In classical physics, the past is assumed to exist as a definite series of events. But according to quantum physics, the past, like the future, is indefinite and exists only as a spectrum of possibilities. End of quote. To me, it's kind of like movie cartoons. It seems like someone filmed Bugs Bunny running around the town. The reality is that it's thousands of still drawings being projected so fast that old Bugs appears to us to be in motion. But it's all an illusion based on our perception of these still drawings being projected at some 15 frames a second or 900 to 1200 pictures a minute. Bugs was never in motion. The illusion of a motion picture is all Maya. As children watching cartoons, we don't understand that moving bugs is just 1,200 still paintings shown in rapid succession for a minute. As adults, we often don't understand similar physics as it relates to what we call reality. Physics principles as laid out in the grand biocentric design are as follows. One, what we perceive as reality is a process that involves our consciousness. An external reality, if it existed, would by definition have to exist in the framework of space and time, which are not independent realities. 
but rather tools of the human and animal mind. Two, our external and internal perceptions are inextricably intertwined. They are different sides of the same coin and cannot be divorced from one another. Three, the behavior of subatomic particles and objects is inextricably linked to the presence of an observer. Four, without consciousness, matter dwells in an undetermined state of probability. Five, the universe is simply the complete spatio-temporal logic of the self. Seven, there is no absolute self-existing matrix in which physical events occur independent of life. And 11, skipping down to that one, last, observers ultimately define the structure of physical reality. I repeat, observers ultimately define the structure of physical reality. You get the drift. None of this is foreign to you Course of Miracles students or those of you who study Buddhism or the more advanced teachings of unity. But we need to think about it because the implications for us in a practical sense are great. First, we create our reality with our own consciousness. So we need to work on our consciousness. In fact, our consciousness can actually change physical reality. That is the scientific explanation for healings of physical and emotional problems and for the fact that we can create abundance of all kinds. Two, these physics ideas validate the unity idea that there is only one presence and one power in the universe. When we align ourselves with that omnipotence, omnipresence, and omniscience, usually through prayer and meditation, we can change and grow and manifest some pretty amazing things. When our mind starts resonating with the one mind, it's like we can Google the whole universe for answers and direction. It's all at our disposal because we are one with it. We just need to get rid of the blocks that we've inherited or constructed. We need to be teachable. So, science has caught up with spirituality. Not only have the theories of modern physics merged with spirituality, the theories have now become fact. So let's give up thinking in the old ways of the science of the 1700s. As Jack Fontana said, breathwork guru, member of unity, that old paradigm makes us feel small and powerless, which we know is not the truth. I would ask you to start thinking out of that old box and to avail yourselves of all that is at your disposal. It's a matter of being open-minded, teachable, and thinking out of the old paradigm box so that you can reap the benefits and power and develop your ability to restructure your life. It's possible, reality-changing, and exciting. As Judge Calvin Johnson said on his radio show this week, we have the merging of physics and metaphysics, science and spirituality. We know now that you can truly create your world in every way. I wish that for you, and you deserve that.